evening that it is. Praise God that we're back in his house, able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Um, let us all stand if you would. Um, remember, uh, there's several doctor's appointments uh, coming up this week for several of us in the church. I have one. Uh, Emory has one, and there's another one. Uh, Sister Wanda has one. Um, so let's just remember those situations um, that God would take care of them. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let also remember the Renfros. They lost their grandmother. Pray for her father and uh, his siblings as they lay her to rest this week, that they're comforted. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to go into your house, Lord, and to fill your presence. And Lord, I pray, God, that we would set those things uh, off to the side in our mind that would hinder, Lord, our worship towards you. Lord, I pray, God, for these appointments, God, that are coming up, Lord Jesus, Lord, for good reports. Lord Jesus, for uh, give the doctors wisdom and directions, Lord. God, I pray for the Renfro's, Lord, this week. God and her father and their siblings and those that are affected by this loss, God, that you would comfort them and give them peace and strength, God, for the days to come. Lord, I pray for this service tonight, Lord God, that you would lead us by your spirit, God, that we would worship you, God, in spirit and in strength, Lord, and our truth, Lord God. And I pray for Brother Ray's, Lord, as he brings forth your word. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your keeping hand for your children. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I thank God. It's been a wonderful day. I got a nap. Amen. Sister Christy, will you sing through it all tonight? Amen. I've had that song. Thank you. 
get up in the morning and we don't even know what we're going to face that day. Yes. Amen. But through it all, no matter what it is, Sister Chelsea, can you do consider the lilies? Amen. Uh, it makes no difference what it is. God still cares. As wise as Solomon was, amen, not as wise as the Lord. You understand that wise was the, or Solomon was the wisest man until God came on the scene. Amen. amen. But he could not, amen, add anything to his stature. Amen. He could not uh, be as arrayed as the lilies. But through it all, through everything that we go through, God is there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Thank you, Jesus. How many feel the Holy Ghost in this place? Lord, I thank you tonight, Jesus. Lord, how much we need you, God, in this time, Lord, that we are in. Lord, we pray for this neighborhood, God. We pray for this church and those that aren't here tonight, Lord. We miss them. God, I know you miss their praises, Lord, and you desire their praises tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated tonight. God loves your heart. Brother Cameron, would you come receive the tithes and the offering? Amen. Brother Tony practiced the song and wanted to sing it tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, pick up the offering. Amen. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of giving, and we pray, Lord, that you would bless both tithe and giver, Lord, that you bless both all the gifts. Lord, I thank you tonight for what you've done for this church, Lord, that we're debt-free. Lord, out of debt, God, you supplied every need, God, you said you would, just as your word says. Lord, we thank you tonight. Amen. Amen.
say tonight too. Amen. So come on. Amen. As she's coming, I want to praise the Lord for being here. I want to praise the Lord for having a lovely, wonderful time with my wife today. We got to go to Applebee's and eat. And then we got to spend most of the day in the fellowship hall working on something. So I give God praise for that, you know. It's a blessing. It may not be something big to anybody else, but it's a blessing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for Sister Chelsea and uh, Brother Tony. Amen. I love them both very much. Amen. I praise the Lord for that. Amen. Somebody else got to praise while they're getting that song. Amen. And Sister Ashley had a seat between them tonight. I mean, you guys all love, right? <laughs> <laughs> I make room for my Oh, I make room for my truck. We know what's important. Amen. We know what's important. Thank but, you. Uh, I thank God for Ashley and Jason. I was over to their house the other day. And I just I just love them. They're just family to me. And uh, when I go over there, I just make myself at home. That's the way I think you're, you know, you do when you're around family. You just make yourself at home and I thank God for that. Somebody else got a praise to them. Um, you got it yet? Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What key do we do that? Do anybody remember? You, you got to hold that mic up there because it won't pick you up then.
doing out there with the young kids. I see it. Amen. I see the growth. I see the fruit of it. Amen. And I just love it. Amen. Sister uh, Kayla, come give us a song tonight. Amen. Bless these people. Give Sister Kayla a hand. Amen. She's taken the nursery for us. And man, I just, everybody just loves her. And uh, I, I don't, I want to tell you this. I was visiting some individuals this week and they remarked how much that they appreciate you and how safe they feel with their children back there with Sister uh, Kayla. And they were remarking how sometimes she'll send a message and they just loved it and appreciated it. And thank you very much, Sister Kayla. Amen. We appreciate it. <laughs> On Thursday nights, we will have the, the preteens and the teens out here for prayer and Bible study, but all the little kids, Sister Kayla, will be taking care of them. So pray for Sister Kayla on Thursday nights. Amen. She's going to need our prayers. Amen.
what the Lord is doing. Amen. Brother Bays is bringing the word tonight. Amen. He is going to preach for you. And he, you can look at his face and tell he's super excited about it. Amen. So give God another hand to the praise. I'm ancient. But there's a few people born here before 1958, right? So now I ain't the oldest person in the house. Sister Bays has got me beat by a few years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She'll beat me up later. Don't tell her about that. But uh, I was looking at them. We had a youth revival in our church. When we had it, we had about 50 people. The Church of God is the oldest Pentecostal denomination formed in 1889. Uh, so it was okay we'd be there. My daddy was a Trinitarian. My mama was a oneness. Uh, we, they didn't get along very well sometimes. <laughs> they got into an argument over the Godhead one time, and my father went out and started digging a hole. And she thought, oh, no, he's going to kill me and marry me. <laughs> But, you know, we had this tremendous youth revival and we quadrupled the size of the church because of a youth revival. The, the, the church had to build a new church building. My father helped raise the money and he did a lot of the construction work on the new church. Uh, and, and my dad always cut himself whenever he did any kind of carpentry work and I told him, me and my brother went to represent our family to the 80th anniversary of that church. Our old pastor was still the pastor there. That was the pastor from the 60s. He had been voted out a few times, retired, and come back, and he was still there. Uh, it was so great to see him. His wife seen me and Greg and said, can I hug you? It seemed, it seemed so good to see y'all as preachers. Uh, and today, she said, and so she hugged us. And after that service, me and my brother went to a homecoming service at another church here in Orangeboro. 
And then we went to another church service. We got three churches in one day, me and my brother. <laughs> but that youth revival was so wonderful that it made that church have revival. Amen. The young people did. Yeah. Uh, a group of women and a, and a couple men, usually it takes women to build a church. <laughs> that seems strange, doesn't it? But Sister Judy Frizzell, Sister Merle and Pearl, they yeah. were preachers. Yeah. And they got together with some others, about 10 of them, yeah. and they went and rented an old 100-year-old black church, and they had prayer meetings in there. Amen. And they prayed, Lord, send us a pastor yeah. that will bring revival. Amen. That's what they prayed for. So that there was a Two preachers, a husband and a wife, traveling through the countryside, and they invited them to come there and preach, and revival started. Amen. And it started in the young people. Amen. Young Amen. people coming to the altar and, and bringing that revival. Amen. The church grew by leaps and bounds. In three months, they had 300 people. Amen. From 10 to 300 people. I preached my first message to the young people in that church. They would have two services a week for the young people. Friday night and an a hour and a half before regular service started, they had the youth service. Amen. And they had 200 young people that would sit, they'd take up the whole side of the church and, and they'd worship and they'd pray and they'd shout and glorify God and, and more young people would come to the altar and get saved. Hallelujah, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and miracles happened with the young people. Amen. And then the church was so fired up when the old folks got there, it just stayed fired up. Amen. Praise God. When I was pastoring, I would bring my young people over to that church. Some of y'all remember Brother Gerald Basham that visited here? He's one of mine. Brother Eric is one of mine. That I took over, scared Brother Eric to death in it, Brother <laughs> I took one sister over there, and the, the young people were having service, and it was tremendous. There was a fence rail around the, the uh, pulpit area, and one guy, one boy jumped up on that fence rail and leapt out over 20 feet wow. over top of the crowd that was at the altar praying. And she looked at me, her eyes bulged out, and I said, you think this is something? Wait till church starts. Amen. Young people bring revival because they want it. You know, you may not. You old folks might be setting your ways. You don't want to move. You don't want them to happen. But God will bring revival through young people. Amen. 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 In the Netherlands, they made it illegal for anybody over four foot to preach the gospel. You know what happened? Nine and eight and ten year old children started preaching the gospel. Yeah, yeah. And that all went my way. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Young people can bring it. I was in another, when I saw that it was young people did it, that's who I ministered to in my first church I pastored. I started out with 10 people. Within a few months, I had 60 young people did that. I, a few years ago, I went to what we had in my organization, we had a combination youth camp and ministerial conference. And they had some big name preachers preaching from the organization, different nights. One preacher had a doctorate and he was from California and they thought so greatly of him and I, I heard him preach and then I thought well you know maybe that's why they keep going to California to hold revivals they kind of revive those people they're just dead like me Amen. I mean he had some good things to say but he had no spirit so the last night of the conference and youth meeting that the uh, chairman of the, of the organization said we're going to have a couple preachers uh, who haven't done anything or said anything speak. He, he named me as the last one. So I got up there and I preached about the revival I'd seen as a child growing up. 
I preached about how Pentecost was really wild when I was a kid. Amen. And I said, we had revival breaking out everywhere. And as I got preaching on and on, I said, if you want revival, you may have to grab your pastors and drag them to the altar. And when we gave an altar call, that three, the five or six hundred young people grabbed the pastors in that church and drag them to the altar. They wanted revival. If you don't want it, you ask the young people. They'll take it. Now I'm going to get into my message tonight. Don't worry, it's not a long one. Praise the Lord. At least I don't think so. That's what God told me anyway. He wouldn't even let me write notes. No, no, no. no. Don't you do it. So I do what God says. I don't preach what I think should be preached. I used to do that and it never worked out. God knows more than I do. Amen. Praise the Lord. He knows it all. I, I don't. I give it to him. He's the one. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 10, I'm going to read two scriptures that seem to say the same thing. The Bible never says anything just once. It says it two or three times over. Praise the Lord. I'm flying off the cuff tonight. I had it bookmarked, but it was hid somehow. Uh, I want to thank y'all for giving out those bookmarks on the... Uh, Father's Day, it had my favorite scripture in it. Yeah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's in Isaiah 40. That's my favorite uh, scripture out of the Bible. Because God has encouraged me so many times with that scripture. Uh, Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And over here in uh, 1 Peter uh, 5 and 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he May devour. Not who he can devour, but who he may. May, I, I don't know, we used to play a game when I was a kid. I don't know if they still play. Mother, may I? Something like that, you know. Yes, you may, and then you'd run and do stuff. Yeah. I, I, he's asking God who he can devour. Mm -hmm. Or you. You are the one that gives him permission most of the time. Praise God. Now, the Bible here in these two scriptures are talking about uh, symbolized two predatory animals. The wolf, which rules America, <coughs> and the lion, which rules Africa and, and did at one time rule the Middle East. And they're predators. They, they, they look for who they can get. They look for the weak, the slow, the infirm. And the unwary. Amen. You've got to have your focus on. Amen. You've got to be looking around and watching for what the devil might do. Amen. You can't go without prayer. Amen. You know what seven days without prayer makes? One week. Amen. You can't go without reading your Bible. I read it every morning. I don't read it as long as I used to. My dogs really complain about me not fixing breakfast. <laughs> Praise God. So I had to read it a little shorter or a little quicker, but I still read it every morning, every evening. I've got scriptures. Some of y'all are Facebook friends. I've seen my scriptures in my Facebook post. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> and some of my teachings in my, po my post are in there. But I concentrate on God all the time. I don't concentrate on Sister Baby. She can tell you that. I hardly even notice she's in the house. In fact, when she's in the house, I'm outside. 
and she's outside, I'm inside. So one time we worked different shifts. She always worked day shift at the school. I worked second shift for a while. I didn't see her except on the weekends. And somebody asked me, said, how do you do that? I said, there's two things. Actions makes the heart grow fonder, and familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> when you don't see each other very much, you really like seeing each other. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> the devil is like a liar. Amen. And the world has both lions and wolves in the spirit. I'm going to show you how much I know about nature. The, <coughs> the lion in the, the jungles of Africa, he goes to the water places. When the animal's drinking, it's not as wary. Amen. And he'll jump the animal there at the water. You wonder why Daniel was told by God to take some of them to the water and see how they drink? Most times a human being will get down, put their mouth to the water, and slurp like a horse. But he told them, pick the one that laughs like a gallow. Yeah. They'd pick the water up in their hand, and then they'd lick, and they're looking around. Look at the one that's watching and wary. Praise God. They look for the animal that's weak. Up here in Indiana, they have a wolf park. Where <coughs> they also have American bison. And they took that wolf pack into the bison field, and they, they're well-fed wolves. They didn't want to hunt. But they stared at one of those uh, American bison, or buffalo, if you want to call them that, uh, <coughs> and stared at it for a long time. And it just stood there, and the rest of the herd moved away from it. <coughs> and they took that, that bison, and they had it checked out, and it had a health problem. The wolves knew it. They couldn't tell by looking at it. Those predators know <coughs> when you're not in shape. Amen. When when you're weak and you're sick, you're not prayed up, you're not read up, you're not Amen. studied up. I'm the Bible. Who do you think knows it? God and the devil knows it. Amen. Come on, praise God. Amen. So you've got to be wary. You've got to be on the alert. There's another thing. That the animals that are prey animals stay in herds. A herd is safer than an animal on its own. That's why the Bible tells us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as much as the hour of public. You need one another. You need the congregation. You need their prayers. You need their support. You need them to back you up. <coughs> now the Cape Buffalo in Africa is one of the big five game animals. Praise God, that's mean. And that's tough. When a lion attacks, what, or a pride of lions, it takes a pride of lions, attacks a cape buffalo, the herd will surround the calves and the cows, and the, some of the bulls charge those lions. That they have killed lions protecting one of their number. Amen. <coughs> That's a perfect example of how the church should act. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They charge in and they, they butt them and they kick them and hit them with their horns and stab them with their horns. Lions have died because of it. They're protecting their member. Now in America, the American bison has a whole different strategy. If the wolves are trying to hunt an elk nearby, I watch it on television, the, the, and they're, it's near to a buffalo herd, a couple of the bulls will charge out there and they hit the elk, knock it down so the wolves can get it. If they're eating elk, they don't want bison meat. 
That's what the uh, bison have got figured out. Praise God. If they've got one of their number <coughs> and trying to pull it down, another bison, some of those bison will charge over there and knock that bison down so the wolves can get it. That ain't a very good way, is it? It's not something that the church should try to duplicate. Amen. We should be like the Bible says. We should reach in and pull them out. Amen. <coughs> if they're on fire, we ought to reach in and pull them out. Amen. If they're in trouble, we got to support them. we got to lift them up. we got to back them up. Amen. Don't get out on your own. Don't get so lonely. Let you cry. <laughs> hey, praise God. Amen. You know, a lot of animals in the wild, they know that the predator looks to see if they're sick or if they're weak. And they'll totally put on an act so that the predator can't see that they're sick or weak. And <clears throat> even house cats will do that. A lot of times you can't tell they're sick because they're so instinctive about hiding their weakness. Mm. Evidently that's a man thing too. Because yeah. yeah. most men don't want to go to the hospital. They don't want to go to the doctor. Uh, they don't want to be treated, you know. Even if they ain't afraid of needles and blood and stuff like that. They just don't want to Anybody that think they're weak? <coughs> but I'm not like one of those men. Used to be I scared to death of doctors and hospitals. Now, if I feel a little bad, can either take me to the doctor. I, I, the other day I was in the hospital over here in Owensboro, and they wanted to take my blood, and she was trying to find a vein. I said, well, they usually find it right there. And she said, well, thank you. And she poked me right there and got the blood, you know. <laughs> it used to scare me to death as a kid. I'm an epileptic. Anything that frightens me causes a seizure. Anything that gives me pain causes me to have a seizure. Praise the Lord. I can be sick with flu pneumonia like I was in 2020 and Brother Robbie came and visited me. Uh, a few other people came and visited me, and I was unconscious, and they left me at that. They just let me eat sleeping. We'll just let him sleep. Yeah. And, and, and sleep is good for you, but I think prayer and fellowship is better than anything. Amen. You need your herd. Amen. Amen. You need your flock. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your fellow flock members. You need them when you're in trouble, when you're... I, they talked about putting me in a nursing home because I was so physically crippled from having been stuck in the same position for seven hours. <coughs> Sister Bay complains about how long I spent in the bathroom. And that day, I collapsed due to a high fever and flu. I had felt great the day before. <coughs> and pneumonia. And... I fell on the floor. My bathroom is so small that I can, I had my feet against the bathtub and my head was against the door and I, and I couldn't get up. My foot was stuck behind my uh, commode. I was stuck in that position. I couldn't get up. Plus, if you look at me, it takes a crane to get me up. If I'm down, Lord, help you get five or six people to help you get me up, you know. Praise the Lord. Sister Bay's got a bad back. She don't even try. You'll just have to get up on your own self, you know, is what she'll tell me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes I think Sister uh, Bay's is like them American bison. Just, if you want him, walk by and give him to you. <laughs> Praise God. But a lot of times she'd tell me, you know, you wouldn't be feeling that bad if you could get up and, get up and do something. However, I don't know where that philosophy comes from. If I'm feeling bad, I can't get up and do something. <laughs> but that's the way Sister Bay did. Nothing keeps her down. 
She had the constitution of a horse, a dog, and a mule, let me tell you. <laughs> she just keep on going. She's like the everybody buddy, you know. No matter how much her batteries are run down, she'll keep on going. <laughs> I, I, I think that I'm proud of her for that. She got up, gets up about 3.30 in the morning and starts in her daily house chores. By the time I get up at uh, 5 or 6 o'clock, she's got most of them done. But she thinks of others she wants to do. She's very busy. Me, I'm retired. That means you're tired twice. <laughs> right? And so I just as soon just sit there. Now, I got things to do. I got to feed my pigeons and water my pigeons and quail. And I, I got to fix breakfast for my dog. Quit bring you back one and fix my breakfast. <laughs> and uh, Sister Bays, she'll sit down a few minutes, rock the dog in the rocking chair. He likes to be rocked. And then she'll get up and go back to work. Whiz, 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 like that all over the place. Hallelujah. I'm this guy moving like this. You know, I act over to Sister Beth said, <coughs> I think she lied to me on her age. I don't know. Graduated high school four years before me, but she must have started when she was in, should have been in uh, junior high or elementary school. That's the way it looked. <coughs> of course, her mama's like 95 years old. Sister Bays is going to be around for an eternity to torment me. <laughs> Praise God. Ah! Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> these animals, the prey animals, the pre uh, they figured out how to survive with wolves and lions. <clears throat> That's what the Bible is talking about. Be smart. Be wise. Be observant, because if you aren't observant, you'll fall for anything. Amen. Stand. Do you know how to stand? Stand, therefore, or else you'll fall for anything. Amen. Hey, study your Bible. Somebody comes along with a strange or weird doctrine, don't just accept it. Look it up. Read it up. Study it out. Get some books on the Bible. Get some books on that thing. Yeah, we used to use books instead of the internet, too. That's where, I, where I'm coming from. Praise God. But research it. Find out what thus saith the Lord really in the Bible. Amen. 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 But remember, you need one another. <coughs> now, I had a pastor one time, every time he heard gossip, he'd call the person on, that was gossip about on the, on the carpet. And so about after he's done with them, they left the church. I had another pastor, Brother Basil Embry, that I worked with. His whole philosophy about gossip was, it's a lie. And he said, the person I'm going to call in the car is the person gossiping. And then I'm going to tell them, well, if it's so, let me and you go talk to them, like the Bible says. Two people going and talking to that individual. And he said, when they refused to go, he said, I know for sure it was a lie. And I ignore it. That's a good philosophy. Amen. Don't pay no attention to gossip. Gossip kills. Amen. Gossip steals. Gossip destroys. <laughs> That's what the devil's out to do. The devil is a liar. Amen. And the author of lies. Amen. He'll destroy anybody he can by telling a good lie, bad lie. It pretty lie. He just liked to lie. Amen. Remember, stick together like a flock. Stick together like a herd. Better to act like them Cape Buffalo in Africa. Stick together and if the lion goes after one of your, then kill him. Amen. Go after him. Praise God. Protect those members of your herd. A lot of people, when somebody's down, they just, let's believe it and go with it. Have you ever heard of kicking somebody while they're down? That's the wrong thing to do. 
That's the wrong thing to do. Be like that Cape Buffalo. They're at the one of mine, and I'm going to give them a hard time like they ain't never seen. Amen. I tell Brother Robbie, if somebody's running you down and attacking you, just tell me and I'll get them. Amen. I'll go after them. Oh, hog. <coughs> I'll sick them like a pit bull. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Except one time, when I used to walk my dogs, I have about four dogs. Uh, we had three at one time, and usually there was always one in there being trained. And uh, I was walking down the road, and a pit bull came out and sunk his teeth in the back side of my collie. My collie dog was an extra large collie. He stood 27 and a half inches at the shoulder, weighed 100 pounds. If he got a hold of that pit bull, he would have tore him up. He had a bad temper. But before he could react, I had a little black German short hair pointer female. She was the boss of the pack. Even me and my wife did what she told us. <laughs> if she thought it was bedtime, she put us to bed. Because she was sleeping. And, and then she'd sleep between me and my wife. Brother Basil Embry asked me what time, at what if your wife says it's either me or the dog? And I honestly looked at him and I said, well, I'll miss her fried chicken. <laughs> and Brother Basil looked at Sister Basil and said, he's joking. And he said, no, I know where I stand. <laughs> but I love my dogs. But this little black and German shorter hair pointer ran over there and she grabbed that Pit bull threw him on the ground, was tearing into him, and he started screaming and crying, begging to be turned loose, but she was about to kill him. She was taking care of her pack. That's the kind of behavior should be in the church. The devil comes after one of yours, go after the devil. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus will stop him beneath our feet shortly. In that church in Calhoun, we used to have a regular devil stomping time. And the pastor would holler out, stop the devil! Stop the devil! And when he prayed for somebody and the devil was after him, let's stop the devil! Everybody help her stop the devil! Come on, let's stop that devil! One time he, he was a preaching and he hollered, open the door, we're going to kick the devil out of this church! Amen! And they opened up the door and this one fellow got up and left. <laughs> and he came to my church and he, he was complaining about that. And uh, he, he said he didn't believe in that nonsense. He didn't see that nonsense. So the guy was giving me trouble. He was telling me how he was going to take up the offering how I was going to preach in my church, how I was going to do this and that. So I got up there and I'm preaching about stopping the devil and kicking the devil out of the church. That's what Brother Todd said, open up the door and kick the devil out of the church. And said, this brother got up and left, so I guess the devil left. Amen. And he stood up and left my church and never came back. I fixed him the same way Brother Todd did. Kick that devil out. Because if somebody's coming in there and the devil rule their life, they can destroy a church. Amen. <coughs> you don't want that to happen. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm about done, Brother Robbie. Let's just stick together. Let's be smart. Now, why did Jesus say, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves? Now, we in the Western world, we think owls are wise. They just look wise, right? And a snake is just a, looks like a pure dumb animal, you know? They don't know nothing. Now, I work with pigeons, and they're just so smart. They know me when they see me. I can dress in any what color or clothes, wear a different hat or no hat at all, and they still know it's me. 
Like, and they say food, food. They can say that word. That's all they think about. I call them pigons because they want to pick out all the time. I mean, when I put the food in there, they just crowd that food container. <laughs> and then apparently they eat all day. I keep, I keep them well fed. But they're real smart. Animals are smarter sometimes. Somebody asked me, he said, how smart are dogs? Because I trained this guy's dog and we were keep competing in a field trial. I was advising him how to direct his dog. And I said, Penny, left. She went to the left. And then I hollered, Penny, right, and she went to the right. She found birds each time she obeyed me. And his wife was observing, because it was a puppy trial, so several people could watch the puppy compete. And she said, my goodness, how long did it take you to take, uh, tell you, take you to teach that dog that? I said, oh, a couple times. I said, you just seen her do it, didn't you? How smart is she? I said, well, she's as smart as you and me, She's just so different, you can't tell. She don't need to wear clothes. She don't need to wear shoes. Uh, she don't have to worry about when she's going to get fed or water. Because you take care of her. She has good servants. Praise the Lord. Just as smart as you are, just don't need to do the things you need to do. No tools. They don't use tools. Why? They got good teeth and feet with nails on them. They can do just about anything with them teeth. They're just as smart as us, just different. Praise the Lord. And I, I told her, I said, when you train a dog, uh, think about it this way. You met somebody from France and they don't speak a word of English. How are you going to teach them the words uh, in English that they need to know? Chair. That's a chair. Bible. That's a Bible. If they memorize it, they, they can do it. I, I worked with one person one time that was foreign and didn't speak English, and you had to tell them the same word about 40 times, 30 or 40 times. Yeah. Well, with my dogs, I can tell them the word three or four times they've got it. And that black German short hair could do it in one time. And we got... Rocking a new toy, and we told him it's Blinky. And when he leaves Blinky outside, we tell him, go get Blinky. He runs over and he gets Blinky and brings it in. He knows what that toy is called. They're smart. So how is it that they know how to deal with predators and we, we don't? Huh? Fish school together so that they can't be uh, killed when they're alone. Certain fish stay in the sea anemones. Nobody wants to mess with the sea anemone. So they're safe. They do all kinds of things. Why can't we stay in church? Why can't we call for a prayer chain? Why can't we support one another? lift one another up, encourage one another, be ready to do battle with the adversary any time for one of ours. On my time, I'm going to close with this, there's a little picture. I like it because I used to preach in a church in Tell City, Indiana, called Chestnut Grove. And they had a big portrait covered the whole back wall of their church, and it was of Jesus holding that lamb in amongst the flock. And you remember the story Jesus told about having a hundred sheep and one of them got lost. And he left the ninety and nine and went and found the one that was lost. That's how we should be. Praise the Lord, Brother Robert. Amen. Would you stand for just a few moments? Amen. We're going to let you go. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you need prayer tonight, I want you to come. Amen. God is amazing. His healing virtue is still the same. Amen. As Sister Christy gets a song, I, amen. If you need a healing from God, if you need a touch from the Lord, don't be afraid to ask. Amen. Sister Christy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. church will have prayer when you come in the music will be going just find a place and pray amen there'll be some requests prayer requests uh, uh, on the on the screen so you can pray for those but let's just open up our hearts and pray amen and then don't forget seven o'clock amen is bible study so if you can't make it prayer at 6 30 try to make it at bible study or to bible study amen and then uh saturday night we'll be preaching in Corden. Uh, camp meeting, so feel free to join us, amen, look up the address, Google it and come, amen, and then Sunday morning, Sunday morning, uh, Brother Tim Dotson uh, will be here from Tell City, so don't forget that service, amen, Brother Lodge will be ministering next Sunday night, amen, so come and just expect a good time in the Lord, amen. All hearts and minds clear tonight, amen, are there any requests that we have not mentioned don't forget to pray for brother eric's family brother paul's family and their mother amen don't don't forget that amen amen let's pray for brother ethan ethan's mom and dad amen let's pray for that all right take that home amen thank you lord sister wanda would you dismiss us tonight